Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar tonight. We're very happy to see you here today. We, today we're going to talk about an interesting and unique topic, which is discovering your creative flow through neuro art. And we also have an amazing teacher, Margarita Schwarzman, and let me introduce her in a few words quickly. So Margarita is a certified neurographic specialist and instructor. She is a president of a nonprofit corporation for female freedom and spirituality, Amarna Sanctuary. And she's also a, an owner of Amarna um, Neuro Art School. She, but on top of all of that, uh, we really value her as a friend and supporter of Antinan Corret Art School. Uh, Rita has been working with us for quite a while and she has been an she has brought an amazing input uh, into what Antonanka does. So we're very happy to have her here tonight. Uh, uh, I will turn it over to Rita in a second. I would love uh, maybe to first hear about how uh, Neurographica came to your life, Ritulia, or maybe how you came to Neurographica. How did that connection happen? Where did it start? So when I came to Neurographica, it all happened by accident on Facebook. One of my friends, I noticed she was uh, making this absolutely wonderful uh, drawings with some crazy lines using bright colors and so forth. And I've got very much interested in that. Um, and then I asked her what it's all about, and she actually connected me to people who are teaching Neurographica. So um, that's how I started learning it. And a um, few people I met, Marina met her, and um, for her also I learned a lot. And then I joined the school, and then actually I became a certified specialist. And now I'm going for the instructor course, and that allows me to call myself instructor basically. So I started uh, teaching in Brooklyn and Staten Island, New Jersey. Some of you probably joined my classes already. Uh, I'm so happy that I have this opportunity to develop myself and also teach you this unique method. Neurographica, first of all, is, is an artistic method of the world transformation. So what we do basically through this method, working through ourselves, working through our emotions, working through our needs, we're creating this beautiful uh, new life that we always wanted, but was always afraid to start at some point. Because everyone is busy, we've got kids, we've got careers to do, we have work to do. The last thing to think about is just to sit down, to grab pencils and markers and start drawing. Right. So what Neurographica allows us to do is actually start drawing without even knowing how to do it. And I know for some people, when they think about drawing, first of all, they think about a straight line. Oh my God, I can't even make a straight line. But here you don't need to make straight lines because nothing is in, in nature is actually straight. That's what our left brains created in order to create structural life. But in reality, in nature, everything flows. Look at the rivers, look at the crown of the trees, look at herbs, nothing straight, everything is wavy, and nothing really creates patterns in nature. Everything flows uh, without any particular um, pattern. Again, because patterns are created by humans in order to create a structure and fit into this. So for us, uh, in Neurographica, we basically un unprogram people to believe that they need to really know how to draw. And my student also, my students, when they come first to the class, first thing they tell me, Margarita, we should tell you we don't know how to draw. And I say, yay, because people who can't draw, they're much more acceptable to this method than professional artists who's been trained in certain way to draw and um, they um, basically, for them sometimes it's a challenge to accept Neurographica as a method. All right, so I already said that Neurographica is a combination of psychology and philosophy, uh, but it also uh, incorporates components of uh, bionics, 
uh, gestalt therapy, NLP, analytical coaching, etc. We could also say the neurographic is the process work. Why it's a process work? Because we don't know when we start drawing how our drone is going to look like at the end. Everything comes on the way of drawing. And then at the end, we just look with wonder and saying, oh my God, I actually created it. I have no idea how it happened. But that's what happens during the process work. All right. So let me just turn the next slide. Uh, all the pictures that I'm using for this presentation were actually taking at actual classes that I'm teaching. So um, um, people are, in my classes, people are very much engaged in this work. They bring back their childhood wonder. And uh, I don't know if you could see it, even on my T-shirt, it says childhood, childhood wonder. That's exactly what we want. We want to forget that we are adults who know everything. We want to bring you out of this mode and bring you back to the point where you, you were a child and you were able to draw it without thinking about anything. Neurographic also gives tools for self-empowerment. What does it mean? Here we can reprogram our brains. There are algorithms that allow you to build a brand new life based on few elements of neurographic circles, um, uh, triangles, and squares. Really, there is nothing more to this. There are some advanced uh, elements, but we're not going to talk about them today. We're going to talk probably next time when we meet. But for now, just know that. Neurographic also helps to make right decisions. Sometimes we don't know what to do, how to approach to certain things in life, what career to choose, am I with the right person, and so forth. So we could actually draw perfect solution for ourselves and stick with that at the end. Uh, neurographic can also be used for personal and professional growth. Some people using neurographic for businesses. It's very hard sometimes to make a right business decision and uh, some people not, don't even ha have financial support and so forth. They don't have support from their relatives. They also can't make a decision what to do between their professional career and something that they would love and adore to do, like myself, for example, right? So I'm intensively working on decision-making process on how I can gradually move from my actual corporate uh, full-time job to um, um, becoming a full-time instructor in Neurographica. Um, what else? Neurographica helps with the goal settings and planning, right? So that's where we're talking left brain. And what we're doing here, we are, through this method basically, working through our right and left hemispheres, um, utilizing Neurographica's tool in order to set the right goal and to plan our future events. And most important, no drone skills are required. I just, I can repeat it enormous amount of time just to make you confident that anyone can draw and you should be able to draw as well. So now I just wanted to show you some of my work that um, I've done last year and some of my work that I've done this year and last year together. When we're talking about Neurographica, right? Neurographica is the basis for some artistic modalities. And the one I'm going to be talking today is neuro art. Neuro art combines actual artwork with elements of Neurographica. And Neurographica style, neuro art style, is very easy to identify. We can see the lines uh, drawn in a certain way. We could feel the flow, right? We could see some rounding between the crossing of the lines. So this is something that truly defines neuro art method. And why neuro art? Again, because it's so hard sometimes to do the actual drawing of something. Uh, people see it and they stare at the blank page with wonder and they don't know how to start. Here you're starting very simple with circles and lines and then you're coloring it, and then you add more lines, and you may add some more circles on top of this. And yet then you're creating your beautiful artwork, as you see here on the screen. 
Here I'm showing some examples of uh, some example of my neuro artwork when I was working on balancing my left and right brain. And you could see two uh, objects here. Some people see fish. Um, some people could see a snake. Uh, some people see octopus on, on the right side. So it was a pretty interesting work. That was the method of my self-discovery. And I'm presenting it to you that you could also do similar work, uh, working on your left and right brains just to see how they communicate. And here we clearly see, in my case, they don't communicate pretty well. So for me, I would say I would need to do five or six more of such drawings in order to see how I can improve this communication. But at least I've got a reflection of what goes on in my brain. Here's another example of artwork using Neurostyle. You could see these beautiful flowers and I gave a meaning to all of this. Uh, I gave a meaning of accepting certain decisions. Uh, I gave a meaning to the elements when I needed to decide whether or not I want certain relationship in my life to continue. And it really helped me out. It's not a specific algorithm of anything of Neurographica. It is a simple artwork that I also use for psychological reasons to make a decision, and it's possible. So here we could see some examples of another neuro art tarot cards. Also, I just drew the uh, objects and then using neural lines and colors, I actually created this beautiful artwork in neuro style, which flows and moves. Now looking down, uh, those are my favorites actually. I have a thing for ancient Indian gods and Chinese gods. So you could see here Indian god Ganesha on the black uh, background, you see Buddha praying and you see Chinese Bodhisattva, um, Guanin. So all of them being created just by drawing them and then adding elements of Neurographica which uh, actually turned this artwork into neuro art. I'm very proud of those pieces. All right, and here's my contact information. If somebody wants to learn more about neurographic and neuro art, you can always reach me. I'm posting my page here. I'm posting my email and the phone number. Um, so feel free to reach out to me and ask any questions you may have. So now what we're gonna do we're going to start drawing. Let me introduce you to very special uh, neurographic line that creates this whole beautiful um, artwork and also introduce you to the elements of neurographic. And we're going to start from that. Just give me one second. I'm going to switch my camera. And then we're going to meet. Uh, you're going to be facing blank white page. All right, and I'm going to start drawing and explaining what we're going to do. All right, I am back. Can you see the blank page? I hope you can. All right, so why don't we? What is that? Yes, we can see it. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so we are using very simple materials here. We don't, we don't need any fancy uh, markers. You could use Sharpie. Let me see if it's possible to show you. Sharpie, very cheap. And it is a thin marker. So if you decide to continue, you can get something like this at Michael's. Or this I ordered through Amazon. Stettler. Lumicolor. Okay, that's what I'm going to be using for my drone. All right, guys. So I'm going to start with something very simple. Neurographic line, okay? And the difference that neurographic line has from all other lines, that it creates no patterns on its way of the movement, and it doesn't repeat itself on every um, step of its movement. So let me just show you how I'm doing it. You see, it's like a river flowing from mountain. It doesn't have any pattern. If I'm moving to the right, then I move my hand to the left. I'm drawing it with control. 
I'm drawing it with control. I, I didn't let my hand just to draw whatever it wants. I'm going to the right. And then if I go too much to the right, I push myself to the left. And you could see the line is wavy. Right? We don't have any pointy uh, moments here. Everything is curvy. And I would like you to also to start drawing with me. Just take a piece of paper. Take a marker that you prepared for this class. And just try to draw something like that. Try not to create patterns. Try not to rush. The reason I'm doing it so fast is because I'm already trained. And I can do it fast. But your movement should be very slow, like Tai Chi. Like Tai Chi Qigong, right? Just think about you doing Tai Chi. And move your hands. Your hand very, very slow. Create your curves. and move it very slow. And you could see, right, all the crossings here. My lines created crossings. So what I can do, I can make sure that all the crossings are rounded. And that's what I'm doing right now. I hope you can see me well. You can basically create a rounding, let me, bring it closer you see that it looks very neat it connects the lines and when when we're connecting lines and if each line had a meaning let's say if you draw a line and you uh, had an intention let's say to buy a new house let's say uh buy new house right and here you need money for this money would go here when you connected this two, then think about that you created a new neural connection here. So with this line, you can actually activate neural connections that are currently dormant. You can also create new neural connections, believe it or not. So this is how we connect the lines on their crossing. We are rounding every crossing here very neatly making sure you like what you do because it's all about enjoying the process okay so when you rounded all your lines right let's add some basic elements here you can add a circle and circle is the most important element in neurographica a circle is a holistic figure for people who studied sacred geometry they all know that any other figure, like triangle, or square, or any other one, can fit into circle. Circle is a holistic figure. We use circles a lot in Neurographica. So I just drew a circle, and guess what? You need to round it as well with the crossing lines all over the place. And you would ask, why do I need to do this? It's too many roundings. Some people get hysterical. When they get too many lines and lots of crossings, they saying, oh my God, I just, I can imagine I can, I can actually round all the crossings. It's impossible. Guess what? It's possible. All you need is just some training how to do it. And some patience. Some people get impatient. But uh, when you do your knitting or you do some other things that require lots of intention, then you know all you need is to be patient and that's how you need to be here as well and when you round some people report um the feeling of well-being they report that they feel more rounded more connected if people some people when frustrated they do this rounding they saying they have a lot of benefits uh because of the nature of this method of rounding it really brings you back to meditative state so here once we rounded everything we can add another figure and another figure in your graphic is triangle triangle is an action right triangle is a verb 
triangle is something that is really pointy and has a direction. Right now, my triangle looks up. So, but triangle can also be a conflict. It can also be some negative emotions such as anger, frustration. So what we do with triangles, we round all sharp corners. And we also need to round all the crossings of triangles with the lines to incorporate the entire thing into one drawing. If I don't incorporate it, it's gonna be by itself hanging in the air. And we say in neurographic, nothing should be hanging in our drawing. Everything should be interconnected here. And the line helps us to connect all the objects on our drawing. You can see what I'm doing and I encourage you to repeat after me. Even if your drawing doesn't look that good, nobody sees you, right? Nobody judges you. I'm not asking for homework. So you could just go ahead and try, it's fun. And you can always connect the hanging part of your figure with another part. All right, so, and another thing I'm gonna do is to add a square. Square represents stability, represents something that uh, if we want something to sustain in our life, we could use square. Let's say you already got your financial success, you found your dream man, a woman, you have beautiful kids, everything is beautiful. All you want is just to keep it in your life the way it is. Then you can draw square. Square will help you to do that to sustain everything what you want in your life. And again, you need to round everything. Like you rounded lines, like you rounded circle and triangle. You need to do the same thing here. Okay? So those are the basic elements, believe it or not. Line, circle, triangle, and square. We also use stars, which basically a bunch of triangles connected together. And we also use spirals that perfectly fits into circle. Uh, and we will talk about those elements later, they're more advanced. Once we're gonna learn how to do this, basic elements, then they can continue with something more advanced. All right, so now when we learn to do basic elements, um, we can move on and start drawing in your style, your art style. So I just want to show you what you can do yourself, how you can begin, right? People are asking me, what can I do? Uh, I love your beautiful newer art, but I don't know where to start. And what I'm saying, start with something very familiar, something very basic. Don't just start drawing Indian gods or some other things. Uh, you could start with something very simple, like flowers or fruits or veggies. Uh, and today we're going to just draw apples. How about that? If you absolutely hate apples, then you can um, uh, draw oranges or you could draw anything you want, veggies, whatever comes to your mind, okay? But I'm going to be drawing apples today. All right, very easy, right? We know how to draw apples since we were like, what, three years old, five years old. Let me draw an apple here. And it looks like a circle for the most part. A little bit different than circle, but it is for the most part. Little triangle here, you see that? Triangle, and then we're gonna have a leaf. Very, very, very simple, okay? And now I'm gonna draw another apple. They can cross, no problem. And your apple doesn't need to be perfect. You can always correct it. With what? With neural line, neurographic line that we just learned. And here's another part of the apple that you finish. That's it. What, what have I done so far? I've drawn two apples touching each other, basically. So now what do I do next? Next, you need to round sharp corners here as I'm doing it. 
And guess what? What else you need to do? You need to round all the crossings like we did at the, in the previous drawing. And you can draw with me, please. I'm encouraging you. Nobody's watching you and nobody's going to judge. All right. You see how simple it is? Nothing special. Here I tried to round my apple. So it's okay. I need to also round all imperfections here. All right. So I've done this part. What else can I do here to make it newer art, not just drawing? I'm going to start adding lines. Okay. And the way I do it, I can start anywhere. And now I can start with my river flow with no patterns created with no particular way to go, I'm going to start drawing my lines. And they can cross. It's fine. You know, my teacher is saying that the quality of your drawing is defined by the quantity of neurographic lines. The more lines you have, the better for the drawing. It looks better. It has more meaning because you can actually program the meaning in each line. I can draw and think about some vacation times that are planning at the end of July. I'm going to Montreal, right? I just want it to be nice and beautiful. Look what I'm doing. All I'm doing is drawing lines. And I hope you do with me as well. Randomly, there is no particular way you're doing it. Every drawing is going to look different. You cannot create two similar drawings with your art. Even if you are drawing similar object, you're still going to end up with two different drawings. Always. Because your lines can never be the same. All right. So I've created those lines. And now what, what do I need to do now? Again, I need to round all the crossing. And you should ask yourself, are you breathing? Because sometimes people stop breathing when they do this type of work. They get either super excited or super tense, right? Because they haven't done it for a long time. But kids, I'm sure, would love to do something like this. Just imagine sitting next to your kid together and drawing those apples or oranges or zucchini or anything else that can come to your mind. And look how simple it is. Fast. Took me what, five minutes to draw this whole thing. And now rounding is gonna take me about three minutes to complete. And you can even add a circle here if you feel like you don't have enough circles. It's just a beauty. It's nothing. It's just a circle. You can add a circle here. Anywhere you want, you can add circles. What we say there is in Neurographica, circles can be added at any time and at any place just to get more rounded and it creates beautiful accent for your whole drawing. Okay, so that's what we've done. That's it. We've completed the drawing. So now what we need to do is to take your color pencils. So I'm using Colorlarty, something like that. I don't know if somebody is interested, I can send you the name. They are watercolor pencils. So what you need to do, you need to take them, not them necessarily, but whatever you have right now at this point and start coloring. I hope you're coloring with me together. Your kids would enjoy this process. So once you complete drawing, coloring is the next fun part where kids can express themselves. And guess what? An apple doesn't have to be red. It can be purple as well. And I'm using very, very light technique. I'm just 
coloring the way I understand it needs to be done. You don't need to have special skills in order to color anything. You just color it the way you feel it. You can create some shading if you want to, to make it more 3D look like. Then you can take another color pencil and color second apple. And while you're coloring, you could also ask yourself if you feel more relaxed because of doing this work or are you more tense? It's possible that you can get tense because this is something that you haven't done for a very long time. But I'm sure kids would enjoy this process of coloring. And now what makes this method kind of unique that you can also color the space outside of your drawing, this part, between the lines, right? And you don't have to make them perfect. They can be just, it could be just a, a small touch of the color. Let me just finish co uh, coloring uh, leaves. And you see, I missed the line here. And we're saying in, in your art, nothing is hanging. So what I could do, I could just connect that to my other neurographic lines. So nothing is really hanging here. Everything is interconnected. Okay, and now you can basically create some shading around apples and around your lines. I'm just pretending that we see them in the sky somewhere hanging on a tree. And you see how easy it is? You're really creating beautiful artwork. Um, let me show you, I've done some prior to this class just to show you a finished artwork. You see this? And the thing is, you can always add another object here. This drawing can be done forever. Let's say I've created two apples here, then I can come back and add orange, add strawberry, add whatever I want. Or maybe I want to, to add more apples and more lines to this drawing. It can look truly, truly beautiful. So what we continue to do, we just continue coloring And there is no special um, timing that is allocated for this. You can color and color and color. Some people don't like pencils, so they are using uh, markers, highlighters. They can use watercolors. They can use gouache. Acrylic painting sometimes also is used. But um, if you are traveling somewhere, let's say if you are on a plane, or you are in in the subway, right? There's no way you're gonna start painting it with watercolors because you need water and you need some other materials for that, brushes and so forth. What is the easy way? Buy for yourself small album. Let me see if I have one to show you. The one that I'm using, you can actually get yourself small album, mixed media mixed media album and get yourself a couple of markers and get yourself five, six pencils. Not very hard to carry around, something very light. And anytime when you're sitting or you're stuck on the subway or you are on a plane going somewhere for enormous amount of hours, what you could do, you could basically draw, right? Draw your idea. Of every object you can code encode some of your desires like I want to plant a garden in my backyard for example right and with every line basically you can keep this desire alive 
right? I'm adding some sunlight here. Okay, and as I said, you can, con you can continue with this drone forever. Never ending story. If tomorrow I'll wake up and I say, oh, I love those apples, but I really want to add a pair. Yes, I can add, look, right here. I'm gonna add a pair. And then you can start straight from the beginning. Again, you would need to round it. And if you have fruits and vegetables object, if you like to draw mandalas, why not to draw them in your style? If you like to draw something else, you are welcome to do so. Draw something else. It's just the simplest way to start drawing, specifically with kids. Something extremely, extremely simple like that. It would help kids as well to learn this simple and beautiful method that can be utilized anywhere in life. And again, here is we're not doing any specific algorithms as we usually do in neurographica. It's in your art where we just utilizing the elements of neurographic and look what I'm doing. I can actually create a double line here and it gives the whole drawing a new perspective. All right. So you see how easy it is and how fast we can go with that. And you could also see that there is no limit to the elements that you could add to the drawing pair here. Um, you could add Kiwi. Right, the shape. And also incorporate it into the drawing. Most important, in order to really call it neuro art, you really need to use all the elements of neurographica and do the good rounding here and make sure that everything is well incorporated. That would give your drawing a very light, flow like feeling. How are you guys doing? Anybody's drawing with me or just listening? I would like to get some feedback if possible. Oh, we are drawing. Drawing at her? Yeah. Oh, you guys are awesome. Mountains, apples, basket, rain, clouds, and ground. Oh, my goodness, Kate. I'm sure you're going to show me at some point what you've been drawing tonight. Yes. Oh, awesome. I'm so happy you drawn with me tonight. You see, kids love it. Kids really, really love the simple method because they don't really need to think about anything to make it perfect or make a mistake. Or, oh my God, my drawing doesn't look complete. It looks incomplete. It always will look complete, no matter what as long as you follow the methodology, which is very, very easy. Anyone can do that, anyone, literally. All right, that's what we have. And you can continue with this drawing a limited amount of time by adding elements. And guess what, in Neurographica, we say that the page, the edges of the page do not end the actual drawing. What I can do, I can add another piece of paper on each side and continue, continue endlessly by adding paper and adding more element, elements and adding lines and rounding and so forth. And it can go like 
really, really limitless. My whole wall can be done by just using this technique and so forth. And it will never end. I will end where I would like it to end, but um, in general, you can continue uh, by adding paper and continue with uh, some new elements and so forth. And that's what they do in school. They put in paper on the wall and everyone is drawing on the same paper, creating some really beautiful flow, artistic flow. Thank you, Ritula, so much. Uh, this, this was great and such an amazing uh, way to teach, uh, to teach this art. Uh, it was uh, really good. Thank you. Thank you so much and thank you everyone for joining tonight.